The story begins with a woman's voiceover, narrating when polar bears give birth, they usually produce two cubs. The mother will stay with them in a den until they can survive on their own. The woman rhetorically asks, if something were to happen to the cubs, what would become of the mother? Could she live with such a loss? This leads to a scene in which we observe a woman giving birth. She is a Dallin. After the labor, a Dallin continues to narrate. She says her daughter, Elizabeth, was born two weeks ahead of schedule. She is six pounds and eight ounces. It does not sound like a lot, but to the mom, the baby is everything. Elizabeth is her entire world. Adalyn will be the kind of mom for Elizabeth that she never had. When she met the baby's father, it was love at first sight. In one year, they had a perfect wedding and found a perfect house. Yet she did not know how exhausted she would be with the newborn. In the next scene, we see the parents entering their house with Elizabeth. The husband, Bill, tells his wife to rest and he'll take care of everything. Thus she goes upstairs to lie down. Her voiceover continues, narrating that all she does is sleep. Her life used to be fun. Now it's all about her baby. Upon waking up at night, she says she doesn't know how people can do this activity every two hours. The good news is that she does not have to do it alone. Adalyn knows she won't get a break until their child is old enough to move out. She gets out of bed to warm milk for the baby. We learn she hasn't taken her medicine for a year, so she gets obsessive about things. She checks the locks and makes sure every door is closed. Sometimes she gets an irrational fear that she is being watched. We keep seeing her OCD acting up as she organizes the dishware. The only time she can be calm is when everything is perfect. However, she knows perfection is an almost unrealistic state. Everyone always told her about how having a baby would change her life forever, making it far from perfect. One morning, Adalyn is home alone, not thinking straight. She horrifically th down from quite a distance on purpose. Thankfully, it's revealed to be just a nightmare. Noticing that Elizabeth is not in her crib, Adalyn worries. But she becomes calm quickly, perhaps knowing the baby is with Bill. She starts writing in her diary that she woke up from the worst nightmare she ever had. It felt very real to her, and she didn't feel connected to her baby. Going downstairs, Adalyn sees Elizabeth with Bill. He asks if she has started taking her medication, which she has not. He thinks the new pills should be okay. The man is too caring and even offers to withdraw from his important conference. Adalyn tells him not to. If she needs anything, she will call her friend Cece. She also says Bill will be gone for just one week. He is slightly concerned because he heard her counting. She catches sight of a crib and asks if it's a new one. He says it's their old one that he took out of storage. Once he removes the cover from it, we see the name Miles on the crib. Seeing this brings pain to Adalyn. It seems like the couple lost a baby in the past. Bill apologizes telling her he meant to take the name off. Later, he says he is sorry again about what happened, and she tells him it's fine. As Bill is about to leave for one week, she senses something is off about him. He says he does not want to leave her alone. She assures him she will be okay with Elizabeth. At a different time, she cries while her voiceover says, it's the baby blues. Soon she gets a phone call from someone. Nothing except static is emanating from the other side, and eventually she ends the call. Following this, the aforementioned Cece calls her to ask Adalyn how the childbirth went. The new mother replies it was 100 times more painful than she had expected. Cece wants her to know she is there for her. She also wants to see her baby very much. But Adalyn says they are not ready for visitors. They will survive until Bill returns. Cece wants to know what she means by using the word survive. Ignoring her friend, Adalyn ends the call by saying she has to tend to the baby. Later on, Adalyn takes a walk with Elizabeth in her arms when a framed photo falls suddenly, startling her. She peeks into a room full of paintings and art supplies, checking for the source of the commotion. But everything is fine there. Shortly after, Adalyn discovers she's got many packages outside. They contain materials for the baby, like stuffed toys and clothes. As time goes by, we see Elizabeth is taking a toll on Adalyn. She complains about being very tired and her baby's inability to stay silent. This results in Adalyn becoming angry. Afterward, Adalyn's voiceover narrates how she desires to drink wine, but her responsibility to her daughter does not allow her to. Instead, she pours juice into a wine glass. She takes the liquid into the painting room and starts painting. The artistic activity is all she has to break all of her OCD rules. She does not forget about Elizabeth in the process, for she watches her on the nearby baby monitor. Painting is her true therapy, because she can create a world where things can be perfect. Sometimes it scares her how easily she can get lost in her fantasy. Subsequently, Adalyn goes to the kitchen to put the bottle away. The silent moment gets interrupted by dogs barking outside. The suddenness of it scares her. 
So she rushes to a drawer from which she takes out a gun. She holds it in fear before eventually putting it back. In a short time, she sits in the kitchen to collect herself. She says out loud that everything is fine and no one is there. Scarier than the barking dogs, she hears frightening laughter echoing around her. We briefly see a terrifying face attack the screen. Adalyn goes to the washroom to take out a bottle of pills. Her daughter's crying seems to distract her from taking them. As she tends to the girl, her voiceover says, None of this feels normal. She wonders why they aren't bonding. Her anxious situation makes her ask what is wrong with her. She can't take any more of Elizabeth's crying, and it's been over one hour. Shortly after, she talks to Bill on the phone. She tells him she's doing fine. During their conversation, Adalyn notices the toy animals in her kitchen are in a different position. Thus, she starts to put them back how they were. Soon she gets a ring at the door. It's more boxes for her daughter. She tries to assemble a toy from one of them and gets angry when it doesn't work. So she pushes it away. The toy's music plays, annoying her further. Since she can't get it to stop, she holds her head in her hands, her stress mounting. To her, the music sounds distorted. Her only solution seems to be repeatedly squeezing a stress ball. She does it until she feels better. Afterward, she returns to look at the gun again. Her voiceover says, sometimes nothing works. When the pain doesn't go away, she feels helpless. Writing in her diary is a lot for her, and she feels like she's heading in a downward spiral. In the next scene, she reads a story to Elizabeth. As she does, the baby starts choking, prompting Adalyn to attempt to relieve her. Fortunately, it works. The choking caused her to call a doctor, who arrives at her house. He is Dr. Van, who observes her heart rate is slightly higher than normal. She wants to know if checking her is necessary because she called him there to check on Elizabeth. He says the baby is fine. However, the well-being of the baby often depends on the well-being of the mother. He also says that choking is very common in babies. He wants her to stay off of her prescriptions, which she already is. From their conversation, we learn that Adalyn aborted her previous child, Miles. Van says it wasn't her fault, for Miles had severe cardiac abnormalities. According to the doctor, she took the best option. Sorrowfully, she tells him she thinks about it a lot. Miles would have turned six years old last week. She wonders what her life would have been like if he did not perish. At this appropriate moment, Van reminds her she has Elizabeth, but she sometimes thinks about what it would be like without either of her children. It's a lot harder to go through this without the pills, she adds. She wishes she could just take one. The doctor assures her this ordeal will pass. Yet Adalyn is scared. She might do something bad. Alone again, she stands in the kitchen, holding her daughter. Strangely, she is merely imitating holding her daughter, who seems to have disappeared. She notices this and becomes scared. Another thing she notices is the slightly open refrigerator door. Opening it more, she sees a frozen in there. Such a gruesome sight snaps her back to reality. Adalyn realizes she was holding her baby all this time. Her relief comes with a second horrid hallucination though. She briefly sees the inside a microwave. Her greatest fears are attacking her sanity. The lady writes in her diary that she is seeing the worst things. She read about this and knows it's common. Afterward, she goes to the kitchen where she looks at the baby monitor. It shows her a grotesque woman stealing Elizabeth from the crib. In a frenzy, the mother runs back to the baby's room, but finds nothing there except her daughter, safe and sound. Later, it seems like Adalyn is drinking wine. She opens a window to look outside. We don't see what she does, yet she is scared looking at something. The window starts to shake, and she drops her wine glass in fear. The next scene has her talking to Bill on the phone. He tells her what she experienced was a nightmare. Of course, she does not believe him. The broken wine glass is her firm connection to reality. She wants to call the police. However, her husband wants them to think it through before doing so. So Adalyn tells him she checked the locks earlier, and they were secure. She rhetorically asks him how they became unlocked. She also mentions the toy animals being in mixed positions. Therefore, she concludes someone was inside their house. With paranoia, she looks out the window during their talk. Bill offers to return home, but she doesn't want him to. In that case, he says he will call security for them to check on the situation. He tells her to take the pills, which contradicts the instructions of her doctor. In a short time, she gets a call from Bill. He says he recently ended his call with the security office. They did not find anything. The manager told him there were new kids in the complex, and he thinks they were messing around. Bill apologizes for not having better news. Later, Adalyn sits in the corner of her shower, while water spills on her disoriented self. She feels like she is losing her mind. She thinks her husband might be right about her getting back on the medication, yet she knows she cannot. Suddenly, the door's handle starts to move rapidly. Once she opens the shower door, she sees no activity. Upon entering the other part of the washroom, 
Adalyn sees, it is all a mess. Who or what could have caused it, is a frightening mystery. She begins to look through the rest of her house, and it is a mess everywhere. As she looks around in confusion, wondering how this happened, we briefly see an image of her in other clothes, angrily wrecking her own house. This means she very likely created the entire mess during a psychotic episode. We see her past self with a knife, which her present self finds. The past Adalyn does something disturbing with it, making the current Adalyn inspect her wrist. Thankfully, there is nothing on it. She hears Elizabeth crying upstairs and rushes up there. But what she thought was her baby was actually a stuffed toy. Elizabeth is on the bed. After this peculiarity, she speaks to Bill again. We learn the police are on their way to the house. Being a caring husband, he offers to come back early a second time. However, she rejects it, saying he's almost done. She also claims that everything is perfect. He wants her to call his mom for her to stay with Adalyn until he returns. She rejects this offer too. When she ends the call, her phone rings in a few seconds. Answering it, she hears distant laughter on the other line. Then a voice eerily says, they are all going to lose their lives. This prompts her to end the call and back away from the phone in discomfort. In the next scene, a policeman is inside her house. He gives the upsetting news that although he will put in a report without a description and no forced entry, there isn't much they can do now. As Adalyn is cleaning the mess in her house, her voiceover says, the best part about picking up the pieces after completely falling apart is that it gives a sense of control again. She can rebuild things in whatever way she wants. She is happy she survived the terrible event and thinks she will continue to. Yet she also believes one can never put things back together like they were. The lady still has a lot of sanity because she knows it can happen again. She knows she can't keep this up forever. While she arranges some flowers, a distorted voice tells her to destroy them all. Interestingly, we hear her voice in that disturbing statement too. Following this, Adalyn holds something underwater. It eerily looks like but we don't see what it is. It's uncertain if the occurrence is even real or imagined. Subsequently, Adalyn cries in front of a mirror and says she is sorry. She says she has to do something. Looking at her pill bottles, the lady sees they are empty. She catches sight of the grotesque woman behind the shower door. So she opens it. Now that it's opened, no one is there. Adalyn is petrified, knowing she is hallucinating. She looks in the mirror and cryptically tells her reflection she can't have them. Her scared face suddenly becomes eerily happy. Then she starts checking if the doors and windows are locked, before hiding behind the kitchen counter with her knife. She fearfully tells herself it's okay. When she falls asleep, she hears a child calling out to her, referring to her as, Mom. Waking up, Adalyn hears a sound, and slowly emerges behind the counter to ask who is there. She holds her knife outward, asking how the person got into her house. The same child responds, telling her to stop playing. She sees Miles' crib, which prompts her to call out to him. At this moment, several disorganized noises surround her, but they are coming from probably her own mind. Soon a bottle of pills rolls her way, causing her to pick it up. She runs upstairs and falls with it. Now Adalyn notices the bottle is empty. Having had enough, she rushes to the washroom where she looked at the bottles earlier. Miraculously, the bottle there is no longer empty. Thus she takes one pill and waits for it to start working. Eventually, she goes downstairs to collect her daughter from the crib. She tells the baby they made it. Bill seems to have returned without us seeing how. The family is outside, happy together with their baby. Back in the house, once Bill goes upstairs, Adalyn looks troubled by seeing something in the crib. She takes out the gun from there. Then the front door opens, contributing to the strange events unfolding. Bill enters the house after one week of being away, meaning the episode we just observed with him was fake. His wife is pointing the gun at him, perhaps out of extreme confusion. Of course, Seeing this comes as a shock to him. She lets him take it from her, before he cautiously asks what she has been doing. We see the house is a mess again. Angered, Bill asks if she was drinking, but she says it was the break-in. He guesses she isn't taking her pills, to which she replies the doctor told her not to. Surprisingly, he says he is her doctor. Holding her face gently, Bill tells her she knew having a baby would make her condition worse. Afterward, he kneels to the crib with a worried look on his face. Meanwhile, Adalyn picks up the gun to end her. However, she does not lose her life. For the next scene shows her writing in her diary that she had her worst delusion. She thinks it is over, and maybe the pill worked. The lady says she didn't deal with her grief because she didn't know how. We see her searching the internet for postpartum psychosis. She could not tell people what she was going through. She was scared of what they would say. 
Perhaps they would try to take Elizabeth away from her. People like her ignore their health to keep this destructive secret. Odalyn thinks they have to open up to people who care about them. Now she engages in her painting, where she says she will leave all of her pain. Later on, as Adalyn stands near the front door with her baby, Bill returns for the third time. They are happy to see each other, and he says he was very worried. It looks like everything is good, but Adalyn hears Miles yelling out, Dad. So she anxiously looks to the side. Then she realizes Bill isn't there, and keeps saying this isn't right. Oddly, Dr. Van calls out to her, saying she is okay. She is just having another episode, he says. He instructs her to focus on his voice. Not knowing what to believe anymore, Adalyn says he's not real. Van asks if she remembers how she got there. He says she had trouble discerning reality from imagination for some time. She created a fantasy for herself to escape something. Yet he does not tell her what that something is. The doctor merely says it wasn't her fault. He wants her to give him Elizabeth, which she can't do. He tells her to look at the baby. Adalyn does not want to, but once she brings herself to do it, she sees the stuffed toy she saw earlier in place of her daughter. It gives her too much agony, causing her to drop it. The poor lady frantically demands to know where her baby is. This gives us a flashback of her at the hospital, where Van tells her the baby lost her life during childbirth. Adalyn simply cannot accept these words. At this moment, we rewind all the way back to the time when she waits for the pill to take effect. She sees a robed figure running behind her in the mirror's reflection. Checking the area reveals no one except herself. She keeps getting tricked by that constant hallucination. Later, she walks with a knife while calling Cece on the phone. We see the latter driving as she answers Adalyn. She has been trying to call her for a few days. Adalyn tells her it won't stop. She lost them both and can't live with it. Worrying, Cece tells her to put her baby somewhere safe. Once Adalyn says she has to put down the phone, Cece gets serious, turning her car around. She assures her friend she is coming to her. Adalyn drops the phone, making Cece yell for her to stop. In the past, a woman approaches Bill, informing him she is a grief counselor. She asks how his wife is, and he tells her she is devastated. She keeps asking to see her baby. The counselor wants him to have a seat with her. In the present, Cece arrives at Adalyn's house, yelling out to the severely troubled woman. She wants to go upstairs, but the crying sound of the baby stops her. Thus she picks up Elizabeth from the crib. Back in the past, the counselor tells Bill that his wife could benefit from having a reborn doll. That is exactly what Cece holds in her hands in the present. Every moment Adalyn had with her daughter was actually with a doll designed for grieving parents to cope with the loss of their baby. Cece is shocked to see this, not having been informed of the horrid stillbirth. We are reminded of the opening lines of the film regarding whether the polar bear mother could live if she lost her cubs. We see Adalyn lying in the shower. The tormented lady is recently deceased, dropping the polar bear toy that was in her hand. 